Hello, welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, comment, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We would love to hear your ratings of the movies and shows we review. Email us your audio file to recappingpodcast at gmail.com and we will play it during the show. Or DM us on Instagram and we will post and read it on air. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Hi, ladies. Hey. Hey, Delora. We have, it's been so long since we've had a special guest join us for a recap. What's up, Lauren? <laughs> Hey, hey, it is good to be with you in in virtual land, but good to see y'all's faces on the screen. Absolutely. Yes, I'm really excited. We are recapping HBO Max rap sugar honey iced tea. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) We don't have FCC monitoring us. You can say the full name, Delora. I was curious about that. Rap shit. Yes, rap (laughs) shit. Rap shit. A comedy, eight episodes long. It premiered July 21st, 2022. This is Issa Rae's second scripted series with HBO. She has a total three on the platform that's now available for streaming. Uh, Here's a quick summary. Two estranged high school friends from Miami reunite to form a rap group. This series stars... Ada Osman as Shauna, Chameleon as Mia, Jonica Boo as Chastity, aka the Duke of Miami, Devin <laughs> Terrell as Cliff, or aka Baby Obama. We have mm. RJ. <laughs> we can't paint him with that brush after the shenanigans in the show. <laughs> he has some. Remember when yeah, Diddy? Yeah. Remember when Diddy yeah. was talking about bitch assness? Like yeah. that's Cliff. Yeah, Cliff is terrible. Awful. Cliff <laughs> is terrible. We have RJ Slyer as Lamont, Amandala Jahava as Jill, Ashley Sharp Chestnut as Fatima, Jabuki Young White as Francois Boom, and Danielle Augustine as Maurice. The show, as I mentioned previously, creator Issa Rae. We have Sarita Singleton as the showrunner and EP. Fun fact, JT and Young Miami are also producers on the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out to the city, city girls. girls. City oh, girls. City girls. <laughs> and one of my favorite, Kid Fury, is a writer and also uh, a character on the show as well. And you know what I noticed on the last episode? Jay Ellis directed it. I missed that during the final episode. episode. He did yeah. direct the final episode. Yeah. That yeah. was pretty fascinating to see. I was like, oh, okay. I okay. love that. Rotten Tomatoes critics gave this series 100%. Oh, mm-hmm. wow. Okay. The audience score? Yeah. 58%. Yeah. Google users gave this series 89%. Mm-hmm. Lauren, since you are our guest today, what's your grade for rap shit? Absolutely, hands down, A. A hard A. A hard A. Yeah, it was great. I really enjoyed it. It was, you know, short. And that's just the time that we live in with production and these media houses putting out TV shows and content. I really wish that it was, I miss the days of really full seasons, 23, 22 episode seasons. Mm-hmm. As Mindy Kaling said, people these days are lazy. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. It's not, it's, it's, it's bad British, enough that it's eight episodes. Yeah. It's a British um, template though. Like, <sighs> Euro- yeah. European shows. Yeah. A lot of yes, European, they are. They Ir- Irish, shorter. all of them. Yep. They do tend to be shorter, but they also tend to be longer in runtime. So it's bad enough that we only get eight episodes <laughs> of a season, which is wild. But they're like averaging 22, 26 minutes per episode. I'm like, dang, just as soon as I get comfortable yeah. in my wine, 
the shovel was crazy for money. <laughs> well, you know, Lauren, I think they think that most people aren't like us, right? Their attention spans these days are only for a clip, a one minute clip on the social medias. And, so they're and, trying to appeal to those people, maybe. I feel that. I support that. I get that. I work in that space. I, I understand all of that. But, you know, it's uh, it's really, it's not, it would be, it's wild because it's not just this show that does it. Almost every other show does that too. So, but this yeah. show in particular, that template really does kind of work for them since they yes. do so much shooting, physical um, camera view, lens view, yeah. the show through the lens of a phone. So like, yep. I, that's kind of, that's cute. That's a cute touch. Thank you, Lauren. All right, Ashley, what's your grade? Oh man, I wish I could keep Lauren's energy going because I definitely did not rate this series. <laughs> I love Issa Ray, and I wanted to love this series. I love seeing Black people in our own projects. I love seeing Black women being centered in stories, but it's a B minus C plus for wow. me, if I'm honest. Okay. That first episode was rough because to your point about the way it was shot, the mm -hmm. first episode felt chaotic to me. Like I literally had anxiety and Delora and I microdosed mm. the first two episodes and kind of talked about that a little bit with that introduction in the way it was produced mm -hmm. but after those first few episodes i did get more hooked because obviously i care about shana i care about mia i want to mm -hmm. see how this you know this group is going to go about finding success because we're all rooting for them to find success Absolutely. obviously Absolutely. um and so even though i did not necessarily love this first season i'm rooting for it i'll continue to watch it if nothing else but for the culture so i feel that that's my two that. cents. Okay, we'll circle back. Okay. <laughs> Delora? All right. All I'm going to say is, and that's on Mary Had a Little Lamb, what Ashley had to say. <laughs> <laughs> it was chaotic. I was mm -hmm. like, what is going on? But what I will say is this. My official grade is a B. I am, mm -hmm. I'm not giving it a minus. I was originally after my first viewing, but I revisited it so I can prep for this recap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I will say the anxiety I experienced the first time around was subsided by the time I got through it again. And I got a chance to appreciate the storylines. I got a chance to appreciate things that I absolutely missed the first time around because what what was going on right yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> what for was sure actually yeah going on this should be a fun discussion so oh, yes, oh, I, I think so love too. that we're gonna have <laughs> so slight too. differences in opinion yeah. I'm excited <laughs> all right so with that being said oh and before I get into the spoiler alert as of September 12th Variety published that the series has been renewed for season two I'm excited so, more rap silliness, according to Issa Rae's mama, is on its way. <laughs> With that being said, spoiler alert. Rap shit is a story about two estranged friends. We have Shauna, the college dropout, who's a conscious rapper, trying to gain momentum after falling out with her friend slash producer. Currently in a long distance relationship with her politically ambitious boo, Cliff, who's in NYC. We have Mia, a single mother, a social media guru, apparently, as well as OnlyFans Dom trying to succeed without needing to do the day-to-day -day grind juggling to get through everything. The two meet up at Shauna's day job at the Plymouth because childcare fell through for Mia. The relationship is rekindled after a night of being at the club. <laughs> and they decided to form a rap group after a freestyle seducing scheme goes viral. Ladies, let's talk about our first impressions of the lead. First impressions of the leads. Um, very strong characters. I'm going to echo some of the things y'all said before. Everything Issa Rae touches is amazing. Part of the reason why I gave this such a strong A is because I loved what felt to me like genuine storytelling from two perspectives. Well, from at least one perspective that I couldn't identify with and one perspective that I, I could only identify certain pieces of elements with. Um, mm -hmm. 
I do identify more with Shauna than Mia. And this is, I think this is a fair assessment of the show. This is catering to a younger demographic. I'm 36 years old. And so that means that I am in some ways molded to uh, receive and, and divulge content in such a way that this show kind of veered a little left for me in that It was way. abrasive at moments. It was abrasive for yes. sure. It was. And y'all are exactly right. Those first few episodes, I was kind of like, I don't know if I can watch this. <laughs> but sticking with it, what I loved, the themes that emerged were tried and true to each of the ways style in that it was rooted in friendship. It was rooted in um, sisterhood by way of I'm going to look out for you and you're going to look out for me or we're going to figure this out. It was rooted in grit. It was rooted mm. in tenacity. Yes. Those are always words that I'm like, oh, sign me up. I'm down to watch this. I'm about to consume this content, especially if it has those two things associated with it. So the first impressions of the characters were jarring, but also I was like, I accept this because people you meet along your journey in life are jarring and their stories are valuable and their their makeup provides a different kind of perspective and insight into what shapes them and who they are and where they're going next. So I really enjoyed it because of that alone. Um, I'm trying to think of first impressions of them kind of separately because I feel like the commonality that they, that they shared was that they were both in a place in life where they were working towards something else. Like both of them kind of felt like they were stuck, you know, Shauna working in this yes. hotel, even though she's aspiring rapper, you have Mia who is a makeup artist. Seems like she enjoys it, but she obviously is living a different lifestyle via her social media. Right. So neither are kind of necessarily living the lives that they mm -hmm. want to be in. So for both, I mean, you can relate to the struggle for anybody of kind of trying to be on the come up and trying to pursue your dreams and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. I probably mm -hmm. agree that I too, Lauren, that I could say, I probably relate it more to the Shauna storyline a little bit than to the Mia just because a lot of Mia's struggles were not personally ones that I've had to deal with or go through but like both of them I could see elements of like my friends you know what I mean so like either one of them I'm like yes. I know uh, I have a friend like this I know somebody like this what have you so both were to your point very relatable characters in that way very much everyday women that I've interacted with and know um, but it was the fact that to your point generationally they're so into the social media side they're so into documenting every mm -hmm. single moment mm -hmm. and that got a little frustrating to me in those first couple episodes so yeah yeah right. I agree with both both you ladies again identify with Shauna I I was curious on how Shauna's character was going to relate to Mia because they do on like face value seem like polar opposites completely and so to be able to find the common ground was really fascinating especially when they had that scene in the car after being out talking about how they ultimately ended up separating from one another yep. and ultimately it was you know miscommunication right Mia felt like Shauna wasn't there for her after she had her child and didn't mm -hmm. go the quote unquote traditional route. Whereas Shauna's like, oh no, I'm just trying to figure some things out for myself because my aspirations has, you know, slipped through my fingers and I'm trying to regroup. Right. So mm -hmm. I think what I appreciate about them coming together was the fact that they found joy and mm -hmm. like, because they were both struggling and grinding and trying to find their own way, they were able to rekindle something they were able to rekindle hope, yeah. honestly. So they are able to dream and 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 take a different path so they can find their happiness. Yeah. And they I were mean, able to bring their strengths together too, because you had one who had the rap skills, but you had the other that had all the other things, right? Yeah. The that, aesthetics that, and the that that X yes. factor. She was a brand manager. The star. She understood. <laughs> and Chameleon, by the way, standout star of this series, in my Completely. opinion, for sure. Completely completely how I mean how likely these two characters like how what's the likelihood that the one common touch point you have with somebody which is high school that you'd be able to circle back uh 10 maybe 10 years later I don't know I don't, I don't know they're I think not they're yeah they're in their yeah. mid-20s so maybe yeah. yeah a few seven years later or whatever um and and form 
an idea that will maybe potentially, we'll see how subsequent seasons go, potentially launch them into stardom. I think, you know, how many people can I name from high school that I even talk to? Mm-hmm. Very few, very few, let alone kick it with and brainstorm and build build something with. I thought yeah. that was pretty cool and fascinating as well. The group is four and they are on a roll. They have Lamont, who is Mia's baby's father, polished their first song to Deuce and Scheme. And then they have Duke come on to be their manager. I need to know you all's thoughts on their journey to finding their vibe. So as we mentioned, they seem so opposite. And we have Shauna, who is, as mentioned throughout the series, inspired by the Lauren Hill and Queen Latifah mm-hmm. and overall conscious rap. Whereas Mia is just looking to have a, a good time. I thought their conversation at the bar in particular was a pivotal one mm-hmm. um, because again, the way my respectability politics was rising up <laughs> within me. <laughs> That's real. I was like, I was kind of signing on Shauna, but Shauna is a little arrogant. A little bit. And I I think she was trying to bulldoze over Mia's idea of just having fun. Is the game the game? Or should we just shoot for Black Joy? That's, that's resistance in itself. Mm-hmm. I think it was so understandable that as two separate people, you're going to have your own thoughts and ideas creatively about what you may want to come up with and what your aesthetic should be and all this and that. But I was never on Shauna's side about what they were going for. Really? And I say that shockingly because I prefer rappers usually who do have something to say. But at the same time, I don't want to hear a song about student loans. I really don't. So, like, I agreed with Mia about even if you want to have something to say, you need to say it in such a way that it's still going to be entertainment because music is still a form of entertainment. When so that's what I mean by not both, agreeing with Shauna. Both of us yep. sharing that's the bins because of socialism. I was like, what are we doing, sis? It was <laughs> it was a lot for me with the, the home rap situation. I was like, I probably would have tried to leave too if I were <laughs> Mia. But I think that they're going to still, from what we've seen, be able to blend it so that you still have a message behind your music. You know, you're not out here, to her point, talking about Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, mm-hmm. but, you know, it's mm-hmm. still, it's a bop because Seducing Scheme is a bop. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the obstacles and barriers that are before them are steep, right? So, like, they have to find a way to cut through the noise. What is their value proposition? It's basically what they saying without saying it. Like you got, yes. you got this person who is, uh, you know, two people on the opposite sides of a, a spectrum, you know, one more on the education tip and somebody else more on the entertainment tip. What, you know, going hard pretty much for what it, what it means, what that word means for each of them respectively. And how can they figure out how to meet in the middle so that they can tackle these the music industry as a whole and rise to the top or whatever their top is. Uh, yeah. You know, Tell us really... about it. Marketing and branding professional. <laughs> Tell us about it. Yeah. I mean, the value prop is everything, you know, what do you, what do you stand for? What are you talking about? What do you look like? How can we package that in a way that is new and now, but also can stand the test of time. And I think mm. that's where a really um, nice balance that, is, it has been introduced for Mia and Shauna has really shined through for the show. I was just like, oh yeah, I get that. I totally get that. Um, what do we need to, it's a, it's like anybody working. What do we need to do to make it to that next level? Yeah. And that's, and that's where they are. The entertaining part comes through the missteps that they're making, mm-hmm. um, the partners that they're, they're engaging with. And I'm really, I'm really excited to see what the next chapter is for them. Yeah, that's, something that's that you said really caught me too about having to work through the noise, because mm-hmm. again, one of the things to me that Mia brings to the table is that she does know how to pop on social media. Like she, she does. does have that following. And that's one of the reasons why Shauna wanted to work with her. Right. Because what Shauna has been doing has not been able as much as she's down for her music yep. and her creativity. And that's beautiful. Yeah, we definitely live in this world of, you know, if you don't have that to Dolores point, that X factor, that it factor, how is anybody ever going to discover you or care 
mm-hmm. about what you have to say if you don't have some type of viral ability. Something. What? How, how can we get ears and eyeballs on us if I was, you know, thinking through their perspective? You know, is it sex and skin or is it brains and bounty or beauty? Or I don't know. How do we package that? Shea butter. Yeah. <laughs> Shea butter. Yeah, lots of that. <laughs> Get on stage, real shiny girl, real shiny and moisturized. <laughs> I am reminded of a conversation we had with your husband, Lauren, mm-hmm. in our recap of One Night in Miami. That conversation between Sam Cooke and Malcolm X. Shout mm-hmm. out to Andrew. Hey, <laughs> you know it's like, are you Sam Cooke? Like, let's have a good time and get this money, mm-hmm. or are we Malcolm X? And, you know, the message, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, it's just to find like that. that balance. Got it to is find just the balance. like that. I'm sure every entertainer that we know who uh, we, we bop to today struggles with that still. I don't think yeah. that that is a thing that goes away. I think as the show progresses and these two women find their space in their lane, we're going to continue to run up against that same obstacle. What are we about? Who are we? What are we saying? You know, what does this look like for the generations of women that come after us? There's a lot, there was a lot of content uh, in my, in my elder age that I was able to deduce from watching a show like this. So just mm. kind of unearth those themes and feminism was definitely one of them. It's just yes. kind of like, what does Black feminism look like, look in, like the music, yes. in the music music industry? Own and your body. Is it, own is your, it your sexuality? Is it yours? Is, is it, it exploitation? Yours? Is yeah, it... and is it okay for me to put myself out here in such a way so that I can live my life, feed my child, yeah. keep a roof over my head? What, what lines am I okay Mm-hmm. comfortable butting up against and crossing what where where do they exist that's Lauren, I, I thought that was fascinating don't you think there's also something to be said Lauren for those artists who even back in the day had to make compromises at least at the start of their careers for sure in order to get gain that traction and then over time you can Beyonce. grow exactly I definitely Beyonce. was thinking about Beyonce Her I was also thinking about a lot of the happened later on absolutely yeah. a lot of the pop artists I feel like at one point in time talked about this too who came up like in the 90s like oh yeah. I had to do all these things I had to sign contract TLC had to yeah. sign contracts I didn't want to sign like all these things that went in because the music business in and of itself can be exploitative right yeah. no matter I'm what thinking, message I'm thinking about pink. Out there. she had to be black oh yeah, pink yeah that's why I said the pink the, yeah I said about to say the pink artist the pop artist really comes to the forefront of my mind Christina Aguilera like a oh, lot of them it. and at the start of their careers were not who they wanted to be yet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it'll package you up the industry will package you up as we have seen intimately and extensively uh through some of our favorite artists uh the movie the the, the Hollywood will do the exact same thing almost anything any other any arena where you're out like in public for public consumption you're gonna yeah. have to like battle with that yeah, Beyonce is a really good example of that. She was she started out, especially for black black artists yes. in their in their medium. You have unfortunately we have to subscribe very early on to the respectability politics of everything from the way we talk to the way we wear our hair to the attire that we put on our bodies to um, the way we let people into our thoughts. That's a whole dance by itself not showing up too strong, especially women too, like Mm. not showing up too smart, too vocal and too powerful, which is a Mm. wild, wild Mm. thing. And rap, rap is, you know, I'm not the biggest rap head, but rap particularly for black women has been one of the only spaces where we can say what we feel and people either rock with it or they hate all over it. But either way, our voice was heard. Mm. Um, going all the way back to the only, you know, in my my lifetime, Lil' Kim, you know, I was probably yes. 10, 11, 8, I don't know. Lord, why are you, why you putting your age out there like yeah. that? Because <laughs> I'm okay with it. And I, I let's it, say we talk about it all the time. Shine. 
We're like we're okay women in age. our we're women in our thirties. We do not Girl, relate I to these so old teens. To be First of all, you don't even know. I am going to be thirty for the next decade. Okay, oh, okay. <laughs> all right, cool. That's you cool. know what that means. Ashley knows exactly what that <laughs> means. Therefore, I am not pinpointing any t- particular dates. <laughs> I feel that. 30 for the ninth time. I feel that. Shoot, I'm about to start saying I'm 29 for the next 10 years. How about that? (laughs) Listen. Time to start lying, kids. I'm kidding. I'm good to learn. Girl, as long as I can keep my health, I'm with you. As long as I can keep my health and my, you know, faculties, my mind and all those things, let it happen because the alternative is death. So yeah, it really is. I'm going to keep rocking with it. Amen, sister. The game is the game then, based off what Mia said. Is that what we're saying? Because the stark example that they provide in the series is the artist, uh, mm, Rena mm, Rain. Mm, and mm, she apparently was an acoustic singing covers to BBL, fake spray tan. Basically, they're trying to say she went from Tori Kelly to Iggy Azalea. Like, she that's what packaged. I took from that. She yeah. got packaged. She did. And I love me some Tori Kelly. Okay. <laughs> That's real. She got a great voice. Uh, But she's racking up those millions of views. Now, is it out of her artistry or is it out of her being a clown in so many ways? There's a formula she's following. You're right. It is a formula she's following. Yeah. I mean, there's not much to say about that girl. Um, (laughs) She irritated me to no end because I was. She was the funniest part of the show for me, though. (laughs) I I laughed the hardest with her in Jabuki. Absolutely. He's hilarious. A great, he's I a think great too, talent. She kind of felt like the like if we talk about people being exploited like a puppet. She was kind of the most like a puppet. Like I feel like he yes. was Frankenstein and she was his monster. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. Yes. How much of this is really what she wanted versus thinking, well, this is just going to be that thing that puts me on. Mm-hmm. Now whether you're going to be black fishing during right. this whole thing, that's you know you have to live with the consequences of that, ma'am. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Very true. All right, so let's talk about the Duke. The Duke of Miami was such a character in this show. What respect and... you're giving Chastity, by the way, to keep calling her the Duke of Miami like this? Put some respect on Chastity. This has a tattooed on her neck, so it's the bare minimum that I can do for her. <laughs> Did you appreciate the Duke's hustle, or was she just a glorified scammer? Oh, that's a really good question. Thank I, you. I appreciated it. But go ahead, Lauren, elaborate on your thoughts, girl. Oh, you know, I had so many mixed emotions around Chastity because I was kind of, she was the anti-hero. She was, I was, I was rooting for her and mad at her at the exact same time. And I did, I, I did love how they showcased a little more insight into her story because I mean, she basically a pimp and yes a hustler and I'm like okay I respect that and I think it was kind of sexy to put a flip on it with I've never seen a woman be in that role so I was like really excited to see I was like oh okay this is this is different I'm with that but I I felt I felt I respected her here's what I'll start with the respect part I respected her because she's gonna do what it takes she's going to make the next smart decision for her with her knowledge to make sure her girls get fed, get a ride, are safe, safe in parameters, and keep them viable, viable options. I did not love how I felt. I think I think some of the methods she went went through to do that. I felt sorry for her spending so much of her resources trying to front, basically put uh, Shauna and Mia in quote unquote VIP, get their song played. I think it was a $1,900 or $1,500 bottle bill at that, yeah. at that bar place. And I was just like, what did you really get from that? Now her role did kind of circle back a little bit later, I think in the finale with her being a bridge and we haven't gotten there yet with her being bridge, a bridge between Shauna and Mia. But I don't know. I had very conflicting emotions with Chastity. I agree with 
you what you're saying in terms of having some level of conflict because it's it's the pimp side right it's the having to see the way she speaks to particularly v because i love v from her social media and from her real life presence and from Mm -hmm. all of that so it was difficult to see that dynamic it's always difficult to see um thankfully there was no like physical violence of yeah you've seen in some portrayals of the pimp whole relationship because let's be honest that's what it was yeah but on the side of her being willing to do whatever it took to put them on I had to respect the hustle because Mm. she at the same time that they're trying to progress as rappers is trying to progress and move into a different lane right this is all that she's known because of who she grew up around which seems like it's her uncle or whoever the other guy was she was interacting with all the time at the house you know what I mean so it seems like she's trying to work to hopefully get out of that lifestyle Mm -hmm. and so she knows that she has to make sacrifices like the day she didn't have any money for food or for anything else. So she had to sleep in her car and then change T-shirts and keep it moving. I mean, Chastity is going to go hard for the people who she's working for. And that's to me admirable. It's a lot, but it was admirable in terms of the overall arc of the series because she knows, too, even though they're on to come up, they expect for her to be a one. Right. They expect yes. her to come out the gate as a yep. manager, be yep. a one, even though they're yep. not a one as artists yet. Yeah. So she it's like that game you have to play within like even corporate American dynamics of like you have to constantly sell yourself even to your own people, even to Every your day. own co-workers Every day. to always prove that, hey, I know what I'm doing. I have this on lock. So yeah. for those reasons, I related to the chastity struggle and storyline. And I, I did root for her to for them to keep her because I'm like, she's going to do more for you than a lot of other people in that per- in that position. Yeah, even her and Mia had that moment. She was like, uh, we get it out the mud. You know, we know what what to how to do this. And so yeah. I res- I respected that too. That's real. That's super real. I'm glad you all are so kind to Chastity because she got on my first and final nerves. <laughs> first and the final. Tell us about it. She just was extremely green, like they described her in the first episode. Yeah. Literally. It was like a Ponzi scheme of VIP for me. And I felt like Lauren. <laughs> Lauren. <laughs> I told you conflicted. I was like, I was mad conflicted. Mad conflicted. I was like, what? But well, Laura, she had to start from somewhere though, bro. She had to I start from somewhere. I hear you. Okay. I hear you. But, you know, it's one of those things where it could be one of those underdog stories where nobody knows what they're doing, but they'll succeed together because they have this hustle and the grit and the things that we talked about. Are you spoken to Lauren with the friendship and mm-hmm. even going a step further, the story of, you know, being dreamers because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, that's the one quote from Steve Jobs. Ashley and I love talking about him sometimes. One of his favorite quote, and I'm paraphrasing it is, your world will open up when you realize that nobody knows what they're really doing. There's there are no real rules. There aren't any magical laws that you really follow to get to where you're going, mm-hmm. especially the people in power. They don't mm-hmm. know what the fuck they're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and so- as soon as Chastity has one successful artist like them or whatever, that will give her the credibility that all these other people they want to work with have. Exactly. It won't matter how she got there. It's true. Yeah. We glorify she, people who have done all sorts of shenanigans way before they worse. got put on. Mm-hmm. Touche. Touche. So, mm-hmm. you know, that those were my initial reactions to her. I have to say, you all <laughs> talking her up has helped my view of her. <laughs> I will say that. First but and last. <laughs> she was like a yapping chihuahua for me. Like, Yo, the way she came at, uh, yeah, she come at Timberland, Timberland. Yeah. Timberland. I was like, girl, yeah. what? Thanks. You gotta make she's making some Down. missteps. She's no. making some oh missteps. Oh my god. And her boy checked her too. I would I appreciate it too. Cause that's how you do it. Like that's actually how you check somebody appropriately. Yeah. Just pull them to the side when you have a moment and just let them know that ain't cool. This yeah. is not what we are doing. I know what you own, but this is my party. You think about it too. She had to realize she has to change her approach. She's so yes. used to being extra aggressive in yes. her role as being a pimp and having yes. to come two people in order to get them for those services you have to change yes. your approach when you're a manager mm-hmm. not every opportunity requires a hammer sometimes it's a scalp scalpel yes there you go. yes 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 big moment in the series <laughs> the girls go to new york new york wave a york wow 
Yes. It is full <laughs> of promise. We yeah, have Shauna. Went, went down in New York. The sip on that. <laughs> Shauna surprises Cliff for his birthday, teaching him a few new things in the bed. We have Mia, who is buttered up by the mysterious Warren, the wealthy patron of her OnlyFans account. They also get invited to the Spotify party. Major. Um, major. Major. Indeed. Major indeed. And then we fall, okay? Because Cliff is a punk. He Beach can't handle. Miss. He cannot Beach hang miss. with Shauna in her moment of glory. Mia slaps an attendee <laughs> at the party. And she also gets kicked out of yeah. her room. Yeah. Were you surprised by Cliff's behavior to Shauna at that party? No, I was not surprised. He had Lightweight. shown, for me, he had shown this was coming. It, it was mm. festering with some of the situations that were going on with him and old girl Fatima, with the way he was kind of behaving at the brunch, with his overall tone about going to the party in the first place that Mia overheard when she was doing her makeup. I was like, oh, my guy is about to show his ass. We just True. went through this with Nate. From our Devil Wears Prada recap. Yeah. He's another Nate, but to a different level. Oh, because yeah. Nate never showed his ass quite this bad. Not like that bad. we about to see from Cliff. Not that bad. Mm, great one. Mm. Great point. I was lightweight surprised because that foreshadowing that you're talking about, and then the ba- that didn't happen until the, the bathroom where Mia overheard him. That happened in the same episode. Mm-hmm. But you are right. There were clues leading up to him showing his ass he was oh my god like that depiction was the worst kind of man i think one of the worst kind of man shauna was like i've been holding you down for three years you can't hold me down for three hours like that was so real yep that was so real and it was like yeah like you that's all you had to do sir just go to a party and have a night try to have a nice time and you couldn't even do that because She's having a different kind of experience that you, for whatever reason, cannot relate to, but have it, can't be, get beyond yourself long enough to recognize that she has been also the second party in this two-way long distance relationship for, I guess, three years, yes. which, is, which is wild. A long time. Yo, but the the way he did it though, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. IG Messy. Live, yeah. oh my Messy. God, Messy I was so, bitch. my mouth was agape. I'm telling you, I was like, this is not how people, real people react, is it? This is some, this for is some generation people, Z, absolutely. Lauren. Yeah, generation for some people, Z. absolutely. I, I mean, but you, you could tell nobody, nobody was on his side. His own mother called after he finished this live. You know, his girl Fatima hopped in. Cliff, this ain't you. Ugh. Listen, the thing that gets me with this, I think, is that it boils down to a lack of respect. I don't think he respected Completely. anything that Shauna was doing at this point. He didn't respect Completely. her decision to partner with Mia. Nope. He didn't feel like they were making good music. I mean, he basically said it all when he was drunk. Because drunk men tell no tales. That's Absolutely. what they say. And he, he thought was, he was better than her. Yeah, he said y'all He didn't say that, trash. but he thought he was better than her. Yeah. And then, and then there's a level of jealousy, too. Because you've been thinking this, and yet you see her making this huge move to get invited to the Spotify party and all this and that for anybody. That's a huge deal. Whether you're a music artist for us being podcasters, if we got invited to a Spotify party, I wish a mofo would. Right, Delora? Come and try to rain on our parade. Very important pussy. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Mia. Okay, Mia. (laughs) All I got to say about this is, Barack would never. Never. Right. never. Never. That's why I say you can't even never. paint him with that brush anymore. Never. Nah. No, he's terrible. He was so bad. He was so bad. It I was, don't even have a word for it, but he was so bad. So bad. And to your point, Ashley, um, it, it was all about him. All about him and his per- political aspirations. And it was actually one of Kid Fury's joke that had me cracking up. He was like, you know, we live in an age where you don't need a Michelle anymore. You can have a Melania. Right. <laughs> so that had me rolling. Yeah. Was it selfish for Shauna not to ask Mia what happened in New York? 
I think she, I don't think it was intentional that she didn't ask Mia. I just think that Shauna, I do, I do think Shauna's selfish, the character. I think she's selfish yes. because mm-hmm. she's been waiting for this type of exposure for so long that it's like, oh my God, it's right here on my doorstep. I can't fuck it up. And um, it's there. And so I think she was blinded by Spotify, Cliff, whatever, Brent Fias and whoever else was in her uh, viewpoint that it didn't click for her cognitively to even say, oh, my friend is hurting or mm-hmm. something's up with Mia. Um, but I think she would have eventually gotten there at some point. My hope my hope is that she would have got there at some point. I just think a se- the series of uh, engagements needed to happen for her to like take a second look at herself and be like, oh, I have been really wrapped in my own world for a minute. So... I think she would have got, I want to, I have hope that she would have got there, but yeah, it was definitely selfish for her not to ask. I agree, but this may be a little bit of a controversial take because <laughs> at the same time, I got so tired of Mia always being like either annoyed or mad at Shauna throughout this series. I was like, mm-hmm. how many episodes was Mia like going mm-hmm. through it and upset with Shauna? It kind of started to get old. Not that Shauna did not do some things that absolutely deserved her wrath, but at the same time, In this particular case, communicate. Yeah. You could let her know what happened. Why are you waiting for her to bring up the conversation to have with you? And I think sometimes we're so used to kind of the behavior or the treatment we receive from other people in our lives that we put that on everybody in our lives. Like, I think there was some mirroring between her relationship with her baby's father in her relationship with Shauna. Yeah. Because remember, definitely. She got really upset with her about certain music stuff because she was thinking about how much it irritates her of what her baby's father would do and this, this, and that. So that was a little bit unfair at times, but absolutely Shauna had her moments because that Mm -hmm. Spotify party debacle, not Spotify party, later on the the party debacle where they performed. The James Harden party. I don't know if I would have ever spoke to Shauna again. I'm gonna be honest. She was wild. That's what that's so, that's enough to break a group up for second sure. Secondhand embarrassment. Y'all don't understand. I had to, I couldn't even finish that scene the first time I watched this series. I felt like Shauna was giving Mia some privacy because at this rate, Mia was all over social media, shopping spree, luxurious baths, true pain, true dinner. So I felt like she was a good friend in that. I need somewhere to stay. All right, bet. Come over to Cliff's house. Mm -hmm. We'd be okay. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And so for me, I took it as, I'm going to let this breathe because I don't know how embarrassing this is. Mm, That's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. Get flued out. You know what I mean? And then get, get kicked out before the trip is over. That's a great point. Cause I am that friend that I probably wouldn't want to talk about it for a little bit. Like I don't like talking about things when they're fresh most of the time. I need some time to like digest process so that I don't either have a breakdown, get upset with you, who's asking me, what have you. So that's a very valid point, Laura. You also have, I mean, it's going back to how you treat people in relationships. Every every relationship is not the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, the NYC fallout was real because Mia was having a terrible, horrible, not very bad (laughs) day. (laughs) Social media is going in on her, especially Mr. The Real Ronnie Reacts. He was also really funny to me in the series. Lord Jesus. I think he represented the shade room of it all. You know what I mean? Worse. Worse. He was trying to build his audience, right? So he's going (laughs) to milk this shit till he can't be milked anymore. He was. He was on it. Shauna it. Shauna is a free agent and she takes it to the next level with Haitian Bay, Maurice. Luckily, Lamont and Shauna both stepped up for Mia and were able to see the other side of this. I'm thinking about what you just said, Ashley, about how how Mia treats uh, Lamont and Shauna. Do you think do you think she was pleasantly surprised in the fact that? That they stood up for her, Shauna going off on social media and Lamont stepping up as a father. <laughs> yeah, because up to that point, she mentions it. She feels like nobody is there for her. Her mother, her father of her child, is in jail. Shauna, like she doesn't feel like she has any support. Her dad's in, exactly. She doesn't feel like she has any real support. So I think when you feel like nobody's there for you, of course, it's going to be 
thrilling mm. to see one of them kind of go to bat and kind of take mm-hmm. care of something that's really bothering you, especially because, again, she's felt let down by Shauna multiple times at this point. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it was nice. Can I just say, though, I was very attracted to Maurice in this series. Woo! I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but I was very Bob attracted Bob to Maurice. Say. <laughs> Listen, especially with him and <laughs> him and the brother, Issa Rae's brother from yeah. Insecure. Yep. Are talking, they talk. I'm like, they speaking oh in Korea. I said, wow. Okay. Oh okay. my God. Yeah. I really wasn't expecting this relationship. I should have because it was there from jump, but that I was rooting for that relationship, especially on the heels of trashy cliff. I was like, yes, girl, get you, get you a very strong backed young man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but were they going to be Bonnie and Clyde though? Because I don't know if they necessarily played Even off each other the best. We finna see. We finna see. I but wasn't I, I... rooting for the relationship because it just seemed messy to me. He was definitely giving rebound vibes. Yeah, but she's 25. She got it. She'll be fine. It's, it's, the, <laughs> it's the time to make the Maurice mistakes. Okay. Good. Yeah, get that out the way. <laughs> and we're in Miami. Like, okay, why not? Speaking of Miami, we finally make it to the James Hardy party. This is a major, major step for the group. As you all mentioned, they perform their two songs. So at this point we have Nab Better as well as Seduce and Steam. Now Better, they really did a great job and I actually quite enjoy that song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it really was. If that came on in the club. It was a total bop. They both are. They both are really good, good songs. Really good. But as you all mentioned, Shauna went rogue. I the secondhand embarrassment was so real, so real. What do you think Shauna was thinking in that moment? Because that's my question. Like, what are you thinking? She was not. She was thinking. She had, they had kind of a, a foreshadowed that too with that record exec she was talking to. She said. Our manager, yes. whoever he was. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could see a little bit of insight into way into the way Shauna places hierarchy in the group she said mia does all Ooh. almost a direct quote mia does all the branding and aesthetic but i'm the pin behind the bars mm-hmm. which is a shady way of saying she's the fluff pr- picture but i'm the frame or she's the yes. fluff and i'm the weight that holds it down or whatever so yeah yeah, I mean, like they kind of foreshadowed that. And so for her, though, th- to see it unfold the way that it did for her to really take a moment that was not hers, mm. that was not hers alone and and commandeer it, that shit bugs me to no avail. Like I that's agree. not a space for just you. There are two people on this stage, three if you include the DJ. Like yes. we for the net for foreseeable four minutes and twenty five seconds, we are a group. We are a group. You want to see some bars even talking about girl? What was she like even talking about she, she was feeding honestly, into her was, ego. She really was. She was talking about the oppression of both black women, but specifically through her. She was like saying things like y'all only want a pretty face and a fat ass, but I am brains and beauty and all these, all these things that rhyme. Cause I'm not a rapper, but she was saying things <laughs> like that. And that's fine. There's a place for that. Your Instagram page with your mask, ma'am, and your wig, ma'am. <laughs> that's where the spot for that is, but not at this James Hart. Like she, that's what I'm saying earlier. Like she is so, so she is selfish. And at 25, I guess you're supposed to be selfish. That there's an argument argument that could be made that you're you just your brain ain't fully developed. Um <laughs> touche. Yeah, truly, <laughs> scientifically, it's not. Yes, but yes. <laughs> um, you know, to see that moment unfold the way that it did, I was like, wow. It and it and it it clicked many, many minutes later before I said, Oh dang, Mia must have felt a type of way too. Cause she literally just pushed her off the stage. It was hard. It was rough. I didn't even want to watch it the second time. I think it was twofold for me. It was one, I get that hip hop and rap in general is a very ego driven, lyrically ego driven type of genre of music, right? Most rappers have that, you know, swag about them of I'm this and I'm that. But I think Shauna 
takes it too far because again she is a part of a duo mm -hmm. and so to always kind of make your partner whatever feel second fiddle to you mm -hmm. really culminated in that mm -hmm. moment for me and I can only yeah. imagine like when she tried to toss the mic to Mia and talk about Mia don't let me down now girl and you know that's not what she does you know she doesn't just mm -hmm. come up with lyrics on the spot like mm -hmm. just for so many reasons I felt some type of way and then the time was up. They couldn't even do Seduce and Scheme, the song that put them on. On yep. the stage, yeah. And so I think the biggest thing for me is most people only get one shot for Ooh. a dream like this. And oh, so you're blowing. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking 8 Mile Girl. I, I just you're blowing it not just for yourself you're blowing it for mia and therefore directly impacting mia's potential dollars yeah. earning yeah. her daughter all this stuff just because you decided whatever adrenaline pump and whatever this is my moment like you have to take this stuff seriously these type of mm -hmm. opportunities do not come every day and so that was the most upsetting part to me was that you could have blown it for both of y'all yeah, off of hard. this one thing Absolutely. and it was gonna go it was gonna be on social media it was gonna be a whole thing and you really thought you was <laughs> saying something until the internet shut you down. And to reiterate, the game is the game. Read the room. You are there for a party. This is no time for spoken word. You know what I mean? And Girl, she so, thought she was nice. She was she like, really I'm did. about to stop the music and say a whole word and think that anybody cared. And again... Being an MC, you are the masters of ceremonies, but you are there for a specific reason. And so rise to that occasion, please. All right. So we're at the end of our series, episode eight, the fallout from the James Hardy party. Mia is not having it with Shauna. Mm -hmm. Shauna is getting all type of backlash on social media, so much so that she retreats to meet up with her old friend and producers, Francois Boom. She was able to negotiate an opportunity for her and Mia to go on tour with Raina Rain, who was going through a very difficult time because that video <laughs> of her <laughs> in, in that car. Exposed. <laughs> Exposed. <laughs> I was so weak, y'all. I was so weak. And the, the camera guy set her up. He was like, oh, he really did. And he she's really like, did. what this tastes like? Yo, grandma, my greens and corporate or something stupid. It I'm was like, wild. No. It was reading very white girl. That's why you know she's completely <laughs> manufactured. It was sad. She's not for the culture. Not for the, it was giving Kardashian too because her face was darker than the rest of her body. Did yo, yo, that foundation was trash. Why was she so orange? I couldn't get over her shoes. I was like, what the hell are these shoes you got on? But I digress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always got to focus on that. Duke is reinforcing herself as the plug and you know, the pimp amongst her hoes and then the manager. <laughs> Sorry. The manager within the group. Ultimately, they're going on tour. And one of the things that I haven't mentioned up to this point is that everybody's a scammer in this freaking show. Literally mm -hmm. everyone. Mm -hmm. And that includes high on her seat, Shauna, mm -hmm. copying credit cards from the hotel she's at and working closely with Haitian Bay who was in jail <laughs> and ultimately getting called by the feds for questioning at the very end of this episode. First question, do you trust Francois's intention? Hmm. Yes. His intentions? Yes, because we, okay, so it's fair to say that he's using their growing popularity to yeah. mask yeah. The, the debacle that is Rain of Rain, right? Yeah. Yeah. However, the whole reason why they fell out is because Shauna felt he stole her rights to her songs, a la Khalees and the Neptunes. Mm -hmm. so, right. so, right. Mm -hmm. Can you trust him? I think with re within reason. I think you can trust him within reason. The difference between Chastity and uh, Francois Boom is very subtle, but they can they can easily swap too. Chastity is a hustler. In my opinion, Chastity is a hustler. Francois is a businessman. 
right now. Yes. Right now, Chastity can become a business woman, business person, but it seems like Francois made the transition from a business uh, hustler, not on the same level or degree as Chastity, but a hustler peddling beats, making beats, elevating himself to a businessman. And it makes sense to me from a business point of view that if one of your revenue streams is seemingly drying up, you need to try and find a new one or create a new one. And so the pivot Ooh. from rain of rain, fallout, <laughs> that girl, <laughs> she wild. The pivot from rain of rain to a new prospective group made sense to me. Now there's history there. So they're going to have to figure out how to overcome that baggage. And there's good, there's history with, we didn't even talk about Jill too much, but they're going to have to navigate that. But that's also life. Like there's, there's life, there's a lot of life lessons in figuring out how people change. And are you mature enough to give them blank pages so that they can be rewritten in some, in some ways? So do I trust them? Short answer within reason. Yes. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Maybe if they, you know, they gang up on rain and rain and, you know, boot her out like Iggy Azalea. Azalea, that's cool. That's cool. If somebody shows you who they are, believe them. I don't trust Francois at all. Okay, Maya. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm just saying because I feel like even though they came out of college together and they may have been friends and all of that, he's shown his ass already once, in particular with this journey that you're on with him, right? So while it may seem like a lucrative situation currently, I think he's going to fuck you over if he has the option to or if there's something that happens that he feels he needs to. Yeah, so you talk about the difference between him and Chastity to me too. Chastity is going to do what she says she's going to do. And in my opinion, he's going to do what he needs to do for himself. Mm-hmm. That's the difference I see between the two of them. But that's just, we'll see what happens. We'll see. Mm-hmm. All right. So I have two more questions for you lovely ladies. Social media played a major role in this show. Everywhere from the actual camera direction Everywhere. to how our characters presented themselves to the larger world Mm -hmm. is it a true maker of success social media because it was rough watching all of them hustle and scam putting on facades and knowing that at home is very cold and very lonely (laughs) yo i'm gonna let the marketing and branding professional take (laughs) this question is social media a marker of success? True no. success. True success? No, absolutely not. It's a factor in getting there, though. Uh, I think it's a stepping stone. Uh, true success is going to look different for everybody. But for these two individuals, they're trying to make it economically. They're trying to make it so that they are not living paycheck to paycheck, coming up short, hustling so hard, working in only fans and different um, opportunities to try and make ends meet. So like, I think their marker of success is whatever cash flow they might need to have coming in so that they don't have to work that hard. And that's why the beauty of like them fi- figuring out what their medium balance is, is really cute, but no social media as a whole, I don't think it is a marker of success. It's a wonderful tool to brand yourself. It's a wonderful tool to tell your story. It's a wonderful tool to stunt on people. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful for all of those things. It's great. Um, it's a great portfolio keeper. It's also a really great, uh, we don't keep picture books anymore, but one of the reasons why I love Instagram or at least fell in love with it initially was that it's a digital photo album. When yeah. I was a little girl, I, I, I collected those types of things. And yes. now I couldn't tell you where one is. Um, that right. part. But yeah. Like it's, it's wild. So people like to hold on to memories and I think it's a great memory keeper. So as a marker of success, I do vote no, but it's a tool in getting there. I concur. <laughs> How does rap shit compare to insecure? For you. Oh, whoa, whoa. How dare you ask this question? <laughs> I know. It's not fair. It's so, not fair. 
Um, let Lauren answer because I feel like Lauren, you have a, a high opinion of both series, right? Like you really, really enjoyed do. this first season, but I'm assuming you also really loved Insecure. So since you love them both, yeah, what are your feelings based off yeah. of seeing this first season? So I'm a fan of all three of Issa's mainstream productions. Um, I'm a I'm a avid watcher, former avid watcher of Awkward Black Girl, which is basically for anybody who knows Insecure is a recycled copy of that. You got a shout out. I really did some time ago. Issa shouted me out and I love that so much. It was why I was not expecting that at all. It was wild. But like I loved Insecure because it's, it had the same origins as Awkward Black Girl. And I was like, dang, she is dope. That That's a classic example of making some content that is evergreen enough to be recycled into something else. And so that's what we strive to do. Um, and for rap shit, like how they compare, I think at the core, the themes are the same. The theme of friendship, the theme of um, overcoming the theme of relationships, those are the, the top three that are echoed between the, the two and three bodies of work, but they are very different. Um, they are very different stories. And I, I love that Issa is creating space for an audience that isn't always represented on screen with this level of care mm. yeah. yes yeah because i'm glad that you said that because having a producers like jt you know miami mm-hmm. it's very mm-hmm. lisa brought in miami and specifically black miami she tried trina to, trina she utilized the environment like she did la showing places that are significant to the black people of that wonderful city yeah, Absolutely. I respected that. That part was pretty dope too. To know that the city girls, who are arguably um, the depiction of Shauna and Mia on screen, are writing or have a hand in writing the scripts, is a really nice lane for the city girls to be in. How they can parlay that lived experience into their next thing beyond rap will be dope to see as well. For sure. Being the next Black Oprah and everything. So again, because I did not love this series as much as I loved Insecure, right now Insecure has the lead on it. But then again, Insecure for me was a journey. And I don't mm-hmm. have the journey. I don't have the legs yet with rap shit. Insecure to me started strong. And I have to be honest, in seasons like maybe three and four, I that almost let Insecure go. Because I didn't feel like I saw growth and character development the way I wanted to see with some of the characters. It took some hard roads with our girl Molly and some of them folks to get to the growth that I was looking for with those characters to really feel good about the story. Lawrence, all of them. So I think I have to give grace to rap shit in that it's only been one season. It's hard to judge a series off of strictly eight episodes in terms of where it's going to fall in the Issa Rae you know, Universe. what what we're going to look at someday in terms of her collection of content creation. So that's my mm-hmm. thought. Mm-hmm. How does it compare to Insecure? I kept telling David, this show isn't for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I said that to you at our party. I said, I don't know. I think I'm too old for rap shit. But it really took me. And that's because it was a bit of a chaotic ride watching it initially and so once I was able to establish characters motives themes I was able to revisit it and be like oh I get what they're doing because it was very new having everything from an Instagram perspective you know what I mean yeah because because that was a choice right that was that was a choice by the showrunner yes (laughs) and we even said this in our microdose I was like I didn't even know who the uh, dominatrix was. I was like, who is that? Oh, that's Mia? Oh, I I didn't know that initially. You know what I mean? So, (laughs) but in all seriousness, I'm excited to see where these characters, where they go and grow. Yeah, So any final thoughts on rap shit before we conclude our recap? Uh, I think Shauna's about to get arrested. Because <gasps> JT, Girl, so. well, if they mirror JT, JT was arrested in real life for card she scamming did. 
Yeah. So they have if, to. If she yeah. went to jail for they a while. To. He did. So if they mirror that storyline, me Shauna's going to it's gonna disrupt this whole trajectory they're on right now. So she wow. gotta do some time because that's a that's a deep crime. What she was doing was a deep fraud that yes. definitely has some jail time attached to it. I don't know what that looks like for their storylines in season two, but yeah, yo, the way she was running out of that party, I was cracking up, cracking up, laughing. And also really sad for her because I was like, oh, Maurice got you. He or got, something. He set you up. Some, or something went on with the the way y'all were operating, which seemed inevitable because even when they went to the store. And sloppy. And how that, yeah, I was like, I don't think y'all just going to go very long. But then I again, I think he had other girls running for him too, right? Or something. So it could have been. I think he's. I hope it's not Maurice, bro. It has to be. That's the only thread line that we. I don't care that much about him, but yeah, I think he snitched. Well, yeah, that's my final thought. I think season two is going to be interesting because I think Shauna's going to have to do some time. Lauren, Mm, um, I still give it a solid A, and I enjoyed it, and I cannot wait to be thoroughly entertained. Season two, I'm excited. For all the black people in front and behind the scenes. Oh, and that's real. I'm just, I'm proud and I'm glad that we are able to have different opinions about the work, but the work is out there and it means something. It has changed the lives of our two main characters. They are now best friends and they talked mm-hmm. about how wonderful and meant to be they felt having this, you know this opportunity to star in the show and I'm I'm very proud of them and they're both cancers. Yay yay. Are they really? <laughs> they are. I'm just looking forward to seeing what season two looks like. So all right Ashley, time for hidden gems. All right. I have one hidden gem for this week. I literally just watched the first two episodes before we started recording. It is reasonable doubt on Hulu. Again, talking Ooh. about projects with black leads, black folks behind the scenes. This is Carrie Washington's latest project. She talked about this on the Emmy's red carpet. So I was looking forward to checking it out. Centers on Jack Stewart, a brilliant defense attorney in LA who makes some questionable ethical decisions. Honestly, they had me and Michael Ely because Delore, you know, Michael Ely is in my type five of men. <laughs> Forever and, made for you, yes. <laughs> and I'm super invested after watching it. So I'm, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with this first season. Carrie is both executive producer and she directed at least these first couple episodes. So we'll see what happens. What about for you? I have one hidden gem this week as well. It is a podcast. <laughs> it is called Vibe Check. Here's a description. This is from Apple Podcasts, a weekly podcast where Sam Sanders, Sadie Jones, and Zach Stanford make sense of what's going on in the news and culture and how it all feels. Vibe Check is your favorite group chat come to life. It's starring three men of the LGBT community. They are smart. Sam Sanders is originally from... NPR. Zach uh, used to be a part of BuzzFeed. And then Saeed is an author. He has several books published. One of them is for sure a New York Times bestseller. They are super smart and they are into Beyonce and pop culture like we are. One of my favorite episodes is called Definitely Worry Darling, which is (laughs) their conversation of the rollout of <laughs> don't movie, worry darling don't worry darling <laughs> and i brought this up on the podcast previously before i was a- obsessed with this rollout because it is the messiest in a very very long time <laughs> and so i just want to highlight podcasts people of color people mm-hmm. you know diverse voices a lot of fun very smart a good time all right so Lauren, thank you, thank you, thank you yes. so much for joining us today. <laughs> She's a dear friend of mine who recently moved away far, far away. And I'm just so happy that we are able to connect in this way. We appreciate yes. your time yes. and hopefully you enjoy it. I did. Enjoy. I had a blast. You guys are doing something really special and you two are incredible. So thank you for allowing the time and the space for me to just share my little two cents on a really great and entertaining show. 
Absolutely. Brilliant. We appreciate it. Do you have any places that people can find you for your services? Oh, you want to shout out? Absolutely. Of course. You can find Architect Brand and Design Collective on the World Wide Web at architectyourambition.com. You can also follow us on Instagram at Architect Collective. You can follow me personally, if you like, at Lauren Elise Tudor on Instagram as well. And that should be about it. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for sticking with us. As always, Laura and I will be back to talk shop with some headlines, some hot topics. In the meantime, be blessed. Bye.